a crazy weekend it has been. It's Eric O'Brien from Way of the Warrior. Zufa, the parent company for the UFC, purchases Strike Force. What? Yes, it has happened. Um, what does this mean? Dana White, in an exclusive interview to Errol Hilwani, who will be on the program this week, said that it's going to be quote unquote business as usual. If you've heard that statement from Dana White a couple times, um, then you're probably a big, huge fan of MMA. He said the same thing when they purchased Pride. He said the exact same when they purchased WEC. What happened to both of them? Poof. They disappeared after a little bit and now become part of the UFC. Crow Cop in the UFC. Those sorts of deals. Uh, Uriah Faber, Joseph Benavidez, all of those guys imports from WEC or Pride exclusively. Now UFC fighters. Here's where it gets kind of crazy. Um, Strike Force has a deal with Showtime. I've heard from Josh Grosh of ESPN that it's about 12 months left on that contract. I've also heard 24 months. So somewhere in between there is how long the Strike Force Showtime deal is going to be in existence. When that's over, though, I think that's when the merger actually happens and you see the Strike Force fighters become a part of the UFC and the UFC become the biggest monopoly, in fact, the monopoly in the sport of MMA. Dana White has promised to take this thing to crazy levels. How do you do that? You either put every one of your competitors out of business or you purchase them and make them part of your company. Right now we've got the ladder with Strike Force, but this opens up a lot of questions. What are the crazy super fights we'd love to see? Alistair Overeem and Brock Lesnar? Sure, sign me up for that. GSP and Nick Diaz? Absolutely sign me up for that. Other questions? What happens to the female component of Strike Force? It will exist as long as it's business as usual, but Dana White, not a very big fan of female MMA. Will he eliminate it altogether? What happens to guys like my friend George Grigel? He's been in the UFC, left the UFC, hasn't had a tremendous run in Strike Force yet. Can he get it going in a year? Maybe. If he does that, he gets to stay with the UFC. If not, then what? Everyone goes to Bellator? I'm not really sure. There are a ton of questions. Very excited to talk to Ariel and talk about all of these things that are out there. But as a fan, it's kind of a win-lose. The win side, we get all these super fights that we could possibly ever want to consume once this whole thing becomes one entity. Downside, there's really not a lot of places for uh, our favorites when they get kicked out of the UFC to go. Look at April 9th. You've got Diaz and Paul Daly. Paul Daly hates Dana White. Rightly so? Probably not. But he does. Will he even fight on April 9th? I don't know. All of those things are hanging in the balance, and all of those things will be answered at some point or another. One thing that we do know, though, is that the UFC wants to take it global, and they would love to have an event every week. And the only way that you do that is get a giant stable of fighters under one roof. Catch it all. Fridays at 6, it's Way of the Warrior, ESPN 961.